My standard disclaimer, give you a little bit of an intro to UPnP in general, then we're going to talk specifically about internet gateway devices. Um, I'm going to run you through a bunch of demos, talk about why this works, uh, and then talk about future research. So standard disclaimer, this is my research, it's not sponsored by my company, it's uh, sponsored by Big Brain Labs, which is me. Um, if you break something, it's your fault, I'm not going to be held responsible. Um, you know, and we're going to try not to harm any routers here, although I blew up one already. So what is universal plug and play? Uh, universal plug and play is a protocol that was developed by Microsoft and a fair number of large vendors um, back about eight years ago to help in automatic configuration. Apparently consumers can't handle setting IP addresses um, and they can't handle setting up firewall rules. So someone decided it would be a brilliant idea to allow the software to do it for them. Um, and as part of that, they invented a protocol called SSDP, Simple Service Delivery Protocol. Um, there's a number of these auto configuration, auto discovery protocols out there, rendezvous, um, SSDP is kind of the Microsoft variant, um, which again, you're gonna find in most wireless routers. Um, Devices in general that speak UPnP are required to support DHCP or automatic address selection using you know, the reserve space Microsoft provides. Um, it's based on entirely open standards. So we're looking at your normal TCP and UDP traffic. We're looking at multicast. Um, it uses basically HTTP over multicast in the beginning, um, but for all intents and purposes, it's a standard HTTP client making <laughs> SOAP requests. So, why is this interesting? Um, we want to find targets. We want to find devices that are out there that are uh, willing to bend to our needs and make changes to themselves. Um, so how does that work? SSDP uses uh, the multicast address that's on the board, 239, 255, 255, 250, on port 1900, and it has two specific mechanisms for discovery. Uh, the M search query, which is basically initiate, initiated by a control point, such as my laptop, um, or if you have audio video networking, you may have a more advanced device that does discovery. And you basically send out a search packet, and you say, I would like a device of this type. Are there any out there? Uh, all multicast devices are supposed to respond back with you know, what services they provide and how to talk to them, which is you know, the location URL. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can sit and passively just wait for the devices to announce themselves. It's not a requirement. Um, they're really only supposed to do notification when some state changes within the application. Uh, in practice, these devices blast your network every couple of seconds telling you that they're out there, they're more than happy to provide services for you, and these are all the things that they can do. So this is what a typical M search packet looks like. Um, what I have is I have my inside host on 1.100. Um, it makes uh, a request out to the multicast address. And out there I have uh, a standard Linksys router sitting at its default IP address of 1.1. And I'm going to say, I would like, in this case, any UPnP device. Um, so the code I'm going to show you later allows you to do more granular selection. But this would respond for anything that you have that speaks UPnP, routers, AV players, um, supposedly there's heating and vacuuming units out there that do it. Um, and I'm asking to do a standard discovery. So what's going to happen back is after that multicast packet, I'm going to get a unicast response back from each device. And uh, the devices love to tell you everything about what they are. So as you can see here, I'm being told exactly what OS version this device is running. Um, I don't know what this one is. This might be a D-Link router. Um, what address to contact them at, and then some other information about how they want to be spoken to. Um, the USN that's provided there is in case you have multiple devices of the exact same class with the exact same name, so that you can still find them uh, uniquely. So, or like I said, I can just sit on my butt and wait for uh, a device to come to me. So this is the same device that's been sitting out there for a while. And what it looks like from this packet is it was just telling me it's alive. It's ready and willing to receive packets. So I got a location. Um, now what do I do with it? And this is where we come down to standard web service protocols. Um, 
I pulled the location URL. The location URL is an XML file with a fair amount of detail. Every service the device provides, and we'll talk more about the IgG po profile in a minute, um, every service that it provides, what classes of device it is, and then these five tags, which are kind of the most important for this conversation, the type, the ID, where the control point is so that I can speak SOAP to it, um, and then the event sub URL, which I'm not going to use in this demonstration, but basically you can subscribe to these devices and tell them that you're interested in knowing anytime their state changes, and then they'll send you messages for any change that occurs, such as network up, network down, rule changes, et cetera. Um, and then the bottom one is the most important for learning how to speak to a service. So this is UPnP's equivalent of WSDLs. Um, it isn't, I have to write a parser for it. It's a relatively simple language. Um, but this will tell you every method, every variable, what they expect, and conversely, what they don't expect um, to talk to a specific service class. So what do we do now? We're going to grab the URL, which we just talked about. We're going to parse out the actions. We're going to send some SOAP messages. And we're just going to have fun with it. So what do we want to attack? Um, home wireless routers. So I have a standard Linksys router right here. Um, this turns out to work on almost any router out there. Um, when I was doing this research, I went out to the store and I bought 10 brand new routers off the shelf. All 10 of them had UPnP active by default. Um, and then as we go through some of the flaws in the design of the routers, you'll find that all of them had deficiencies that make it very difficult for a consumer to deal with the behavior of these devices. Um, so UPnP, and specifically the IGD, is for simplifying internet connectivity. So I plug in my router. I just want it to work. You know, stores were having trouble with customer support. I bought my router. It doesn't work. I don't understand. It was costing me money. Devices were getting returned. So we simplified it. We let the devices do it for us. Um, and the crux of the problem is any device can request an inbound port forward on your wireless router with no authentication. Um, so I don't think anybody's going to let me log into their router. I'm going to assume that you all change the default username and password on your routers and everyone else that you knows. Um, so I'll do it myself. And uh, this is simply how it works. Within the profiles, and if we have time at the end, I can show you what some of these profiles look like in XML. Um, there's two specific sub profiles that both provide a function called add port mapping. This is default in the protocol. If you go and read the spec, uh, there's an RFC that never went further than an RFC. Um, you have a WAN IP connection, which would be your standard Ethernet, or a WAN PPP, which is usually any form of DSL. Um, there are some devices out there that this profile exists in modems. A lot of them don't bother with that profile, and they just act as IP connections. But all I need to do is I need to send the properly formatted SOAP message with uh, what host I want to connect to, what host I want to allow the connection from, and the ports that I want to do it on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a simple demonstration of what that looks like using this default out-of-the-box router. So this is my setup network. I'm going to be using my laptop as the inside and the outside. I have a wireless router in the middle. And then I have an external host, which I'm going to show you can connect through the router with basically a couple of packets. So like I said, I have two VMs running on my system. And still have mouse problems. So they may have something non-shiny, like a flat piece of white paper. All right, that's better. So while I reboot these uh, two virtual machines, um, I originally got interested in this. Um, because consumer devices are something that we as security professionals have a habit of not looking at as frequently as we should. But we all have users who work from home. We are all worried about an attacker coming into our company, 
um, and maybe leaving a device around. Consumer devices are cheap, right? I don't want to walk in and have to leave a laptop in your business to perform an attack on your business. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the cheapest device possible. A $50 consumer router is a throwaway device. This attack class is really based on uh, hitting home users at home. But the reality is you can perform using different types of devices attacks against businesses by changing the configuration on these types of devices and leaving them in the office. You know, for you know, 10 wireless routers for $50, I can throw away. If I get one successful attack by leaving it, I'm good. Um, in this case, what I'm looking for is I want to get in and maybe after the user disconnects from the VPN, I still have access to their Samba shares from the internet. Um, so as these continue to boot, so um, in 2006, and if I have time at the end, I'll show you another variant that also used UPnP. Um, we're finding a lot more devices like uh, AV players um, are using UPnP and variants of it to boot off of the network and receive their system images. So an extension of this, uh, which I did in 2006, was actually subverting the boot process of a wireless media adapter to turn it into a Kismet drone. Um, and if there's time, I'll actually show you a couple of slides from that. I don't have the device with me, um, but we'll see what we can do for you. So I should be just about up here. All right, so on the bottom will be my inside host, and on the top will be my outside host. And we won't have to reboot the VMs again and waste time. <laughs> All right, so on the outside, I'd like to get into the inside network. Recall that uh, my inside network, or the outside interface for this device is actually 5.100. So I'm just going to try to telnet to the outside interface on the wireless router on uh, port 1234, which is the port I'm going to be using for this attack. So on 5.100, 1234, right? Standard drop packet, this is going to hang, this is going to time out. Uh, so now on the inside, I'm going to send a couple of quick UPnP queries, change the device's configuration, and then show you what actually happens. So on the inside, I'm going to run my little demo script, demo1. Right, and what demo1 is going to do is it's going to show you adding a port mapping. Um, and then it's just going to start a little test server, which is going to respond back with a banner showing me I was successful. So when we run demo one, it's going to go out, found a UPnP device, specifically an internet gateway, which in the code, which I'll show you later, uh, I specifically asked for this class of device. It was at, available at that URL that you see on the screen. Um, and I sent it an app port mapping for 1234 from any host on the internet to the device on the inside. So now if I go back to the outside and I tell that back to the host, I fail. <laughs> so live demos are wonderful. <laughs> so I have videos if this doesn't work. I'm prepared for once. So let's run demo one one more time. All right. Telnet one, two, three, four. There you go. Now I'm successful. You see hello from and the IP address I connected to and the port I connected on. And if I run it again, instead of a drop packet, I should get a refuse. You can see I got a refuse that time. Um, I can go back on the inside. I can rerun the test server. And I should be able to do it again. OK, and there you go. So less fail, more good. So what just happened? Simple discovery, and this is, um, as part of this, I'm going to be showing you a uh, UPnP toolkit that I wrote called UPnP Pwn. It's written in Ruby. It's meant for uh, tab complete exploiting of UPnP devices. 
I've tested it on IGDs. I'm starting to test it on AV media 